put on your crown and lower the drawbridge because today we've got 25 crazy, cool, epic, awesome, funny, weird, wild, unexpected, true <gasps> facts about castles. Number 25. Let's start with the basics. The word castle comes from the Latin word castellum, which means small fortified place. Castles are definitely fortified places, but I'm not so sure anyone paid attention to the small part. Maybe it got lost in translation? Number 24. Many people think that the words castle and palace are interchangeable, but there's actually some pretty big differences. Castles are fortresses that were built for security and defense. They were tactical posts for military units, and they protected royal families during times of war. Palaces, on the other hand, were built to showcase wealth. They were much more flashy and decorative, but they were also more vulnerable to attacks since they weren't built specifically for defense. And you know, it kind of seems like they should have just combined the two things, right? Oh man, look at that beauty. Number 23, the oldest known castle in the world. Found in Yemen, this ancient fortress is called the Gomdan or Gumdan Castle and was built over 1,800 years ago. It was originally over 20 stories high, but time has a way of taking a little off the top. Number 22, Windsor Castle is the longest inhabited castle in all of England. It was built shortly after William the Conqueror invaded England in 1066 and people have been living there ever since. Today, it's home to more than 500 people, which also makes it the largest inhabited castle in the world. Number 21, Malbork Castle in Poland is one of the largest castles on the planet. It was originally finished in 1406 by the Teutonic Knights and was the largest brick castle in the world at the time. The castle was repeatedly expanded throughout the years as more and more knights lived it. It's so large that it's actually made up of three castles combined. The high, middle, and lower castles are all separated by towers and moats. At one point, it was home to over 3,000 knights. I guess with all that armor and swords and horses and stuff, that's probably why they needed all the extra space. Number 20. Moats were an extremely popular security feature for castles all around the world, and they weren't always the kind of moat you'd see in the cartoons. Some moats didn't even have water in them. The simplest moats were deep, dry holes in the ground designed to trap enemies. The most elaborate ones were man-made rivers that involved floodgates. Many people used to believe that moats were full of dangerous animals like crocodiles or even sharks, but that's actually not true. The only living creatures in the moats were the soldiers dumb enough to fall in them. Number 19. Even if attacking troops did manage to make it past the moat, they would still have a long way to go before they could get anywhere near the castle entrance. Many castles were built with huge fortified gates called barbicans that had a long road from the gate to the castle entrance. This was an enclosed road called the Neck. Barbicans created an extra defensive bottleneck for defending armies before the castle could be overrun. Sometimes, Barbicans were fitted with holes in the ceiling aptly called murder holes where castle defenders could pour hot oils or liquids onto invading armies. Ooh, sick burn. Number 18. Another defensive feature of a castle was the keep, a tower in the middle of the castle's grounds with extra thick walls and strong gates. If attackers somehow managed to breach the castle walls, <gasps> The royal family would usually just retreat to the keep to hide in safety until the battle died down. Number 17. For those who were fighting the enemy instead of hiding like little babies, there were several key offensive positions throughout the castle grounds. Archers, for instance, would typically fight from battlements, the secure platforms on top of towers. The walls of these platforms were lined with holes so that archers could shoot quickly then scurry back for cover. Cover me! I'm going in! Number 16. Most castles also included a dungeon! You may think that these dungeons were constantly full of the king's prisoners, but in reality, they were almost always empty. Most prisoners were exiled or executed because royal families didn't want to keep them around. Only the most important prisoners were kept for long periods of time. Sorry guys, off with their heads! Number 15. Some castles used the environment to their advantage. 
castles were often built at the mouth of a cave so that they could only be attacked from the front. Prijama Castle in Slovenia holds the world record as the largest cave castle on Earth. I just hope they remembered to check out what was in the cave before building the castle. Number 14. Island castles were also quite popular because they were cheap, easy to build, and much easier to defend. Building a castle on an island provided it with a huge natural moat. The only time these castles were vulnerable to direct attack was during the winter when the water froze into ice. Oh, what a sweet double axle! Number 13. If you think that building a castle on an island sounds crazy, wait until you get a load of this! Swallow's Nest is a Ukrainian castle built around 1912 as a private home. But what makes it so crazy? Well, for some reason, it was built hanging directly over the edge of a cliff! Talk about some prime real estate. At one point, an earthquake even cracked the cliff and almost sent the whole thing tumbling to the ground. Don't worry though, nobody lives there now. It's now actually home to an Italian restaurant, so you can go get a plate of spaghetti if you're feeling particularly brave. Number 12. Castles became much less popular in the 1400s because of advances in technology. Gunpowder and artillery were invented, which were strong enough to destroy a castle wall. Royal families hated these new and improved weapons because it meant that it was much more difficult and expensive to keep their castle fortified. Attackers, on the other hand, thought the weapons were a blast. Number 11. Star forts were the defensive answers to those advanced cannons. They were originally used in Italy, but they spread throughout the world during the 1530s. The walls of these forts were shorter, thicker, and harder to break through with artillery fire. They were also built out of brick instead of stone so that they could withstand more damage. And the walls were built in the shape of a star. Oh, so that's where the name comes from. This design didn't just make the fort look pretty, it made the walls harder to shoot and gave defending armies great vantage points to defend from. Number 10. Even though Germany's Neuschwanstein Castle looks like it's straight out of the medieval times, construction wasn't started until 1869, over 500 years later. It has many modern features such as heating, running water, and most importantly, flushing toilets. After all, what would a castle be without a royal porcelain throne? Number 9. Chateau Gaillard is one castle that probably would have been better off without toilets. When the French King Philip II attacked the castle, his forces couldn't penetrate the walls, so instead he ordered his troops to climb through the sewer system to get inside. Surprisingly, the loyal soldiers agreed to go through with it, and the strategy worked perfectly. That just goes to show you, you can be successful even when your plan totally stinks. Number 8. Does this castle look familiar to you? You might not recognize it at first, but you've probably seen it before. It's Alnwick Castle in Northumberland, England, and it starred as Hogwarts in several of the Harry Potter films. Before it caught its big break, the castle wasn't particularly famous outside the area. But thanks to the magic of Harry, Ron, and Hermione, it's now an extremely popular tourist destination. Accio, local revenue. It seems like a pretty magical place, but if you want to go on a tour of the castle, you should probably stay out of the dungeon. I heard there might be a troll in there. Number seven. Speaking of movie stars, did you know that actor Nicolas Cage used to own two different castles? It's crazy, but true. His first castle was in Germany, but he sold it and bought one in England, which he eventually sold as well. But before that, he probably had some pretty sweet parties in there. Oh, that man is a national treasure. Number six, Castle Drogo was the last castle to be built in England. It was built as a private residence for an English businessman named Julius Vu. Construction started in 1911 and took almost 20 years to complete. Man, castles take forever to build. No wonder they stopped making these things. Number five. Even after thousands of years, powerful people still love to hold court in castles. For instance, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, lives in Moscow's Kremlin today. The Kremlin is an ancient Russian castle that includes five palaces, four cathedrals, and a huge wall with towers. 
Hey, at least he's booting that castle to good use. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, just kidding. He's kind of scary. Number four. One of the worst things about living in a castle was being under siege by invaders. For those of you that don't know, a siege is when enemy forces completely surround a building, like a castle, which cuts off their ability to get supplies like food or weapons, ideally forcing the inhabitants to surrender. Edinburgh Castle in Scotland was put under siege 26 times since it was first built in the 12th century. In fact, sieges were so common in Scotland that there is only one Scottish castle that has never been taken by force. Stirling Castle survived eight unsuccessful siege attempts in its history. And you know, it couldn't have been easy to find ways to kill all that time. Number three, Berg Hakostowitz in Austria is a staggering 2,179 feet in the air. It sits on top of a massive rock formation on the edge of the Alps mountain range. It's considered one of the most impressive medieval castles ever built because of its precarious position. But you know, it's still up there today and it can still be seen from up to 19 miles away. Hmm, I wonder how they got up there back in the day. Number two. Aside from their amazing designs, most castles look pretty plain on the outside when we visit them today. But what you might not know is that many castles used to be painted with bright colors. Unfortunately, years and years of wind, snow, and rain have stripped most of that paint away, leaving behind the boring natural color of the stone walls. In an effort to preserve a colorful piece of history, the Pena National Palace in Portugal was recently repainted to its original colors. And Stirling Castle in Scotland, you know, the one that was never taken by siege, had its great hall recently repainted to its original bright yellow hue. And that brings us to our number one fact about castles, the Himeji Castle. This beautiful building's unique design is supposed to represent a bird taking flight. It's the largest castle in all of Japan and one of the strongest buildings in the whole world. In fact, it was even within the blast radius of an atomic bomb during World War II, and it didn't fall down. It also stayed standing during the Great Hanshin Earthquake in 1995. Oh man, if Godzilla shows up, I know what building I'm gonna hide in. And there they are, 25 captivating facts about castles. Remember to subscribe to DreamWorks TV for new videos every day. I'm your host, and I'm gonna build my own castle right now. Probably with sand maybe with ice. See ya!